over the last couple weeks i've been really diving into this new ai coding world and all the new tools that have come out recently i tested out three different ai coding tools uh bolt.new lovable.dev and windsurf and i want to show y'all kind of a little bit of what each one had to offer and i thought it'd be interesting to take this approach of building the same app or the same game in three different softwares the first tool that i used was bolt.new and i'll be completely honest with you this is my favorite one out of all the ones that we're going to talk about so spoiler alert but stick around to the end if you want to just kind of hear more about why that is stack blitz actually is a version control software company kind of like github or gitlab but bolt.new is a new product they put out recently that i mean i'm sure is bringing a ton of people into their other platform it's actually a pretty great um, like version control alternative to GitHub. Anyways, their free tool uh, is is absolutely crazy. If you go to bold.new, you'll get prompted with this nice little, just easy chat interface, like we expect with most AI tools today. And you can literally write in here, whatever you want about an application, um, as simple or as complex as you want it to be. And Bolt just gets straight to work. No login, no authentication, nothing. You don't have to pay for anything and it's just easy it just works so for me um i use ChatGPT to actually create a product requirement document for like the game i was trying to build so for me i wanted to try this this game i had in my mind for a while which is like this word synonym game and basically it's just um i imagined a user getting shown a random word and you have a little input field and you have to type in a word that means the same thing and so the point is to kind of exercise your vocab try to learn new words you'd have like a timer that only gives you a certain amount of time to like into the word get it right a certain number of guesses to get it right blah, blah 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 easy medium hard mode you get the point i told it to act as a something like a senior architect software engineer whatever whatever create me a product requirement document for this game it should do these things and have these modes and the timer works like this blah blah blah, blah. and even to push it a step further i gave it an api to use for fetching the words and things like that. So had I not done that, it likely would have just hard coded the words in, but I wanted to push it and see what it could really do. So uh, I actually used uh, like a random word API. I think it's called like API Ninjas or something like that. It has a thesaurus API and like a random word um, endpoint. And I was able to just grab uh, a key for that, put it into the, the prompt for ChatGPT and tell it, hey, here are the endpoints to use for the random word and getting the synonyms. And then here's the API key. And then it just wrote the PRD for me, put it into bold.new, and then it goes to work. And so it just, it starts building. And I would say that Bolt had, to me, the best overall user experience from being able to go to bold.new in a new browser tab and just start working without creating an account, without logging in, without doing anything. Um, it could handle a huge PRD that was generated by ChatGPT, and it understood the requirements very well. So it didn't take a lot of prompting back and forth to necessarily get it right. I would say all in all, it probably took me maybe like four or five prompts to get the game, you know, somewhat working like exactly how I'd expect. Also, I would say that it did the best with creativity in UI. So that's like one of the areas I struggle with the most is just is like beautiful UI design. That's not my specialty or my, my area of expertise, but that's what I'm looking forward to leaning on some of these tools for is to help me get out of my own head about building UI and things like that and just getting something out and just iterating on it. So I think Bolt actually understood the assignment the best when it came to creativity and making the game really engaging for people and looking really modern. And you'll see compared to the other ones, I just think it did overall the best job. Now, the next thing I like about Bolt is that you can literally just download this um, as the source file you can download it as a zip folder and then i've been able to open those projects up in vs code or whatever editor you use and literally just keep working if you just open it up uh my projects were all react and bolt you just open it up and do npm install and then you do an npm run dev the app builds just fine i have not had any issues trying to build the app locally or anything like that so um, I just think that that changes the game. You can also one click deploy to Netlify on Bolt.new, which is amazing. Again, no login required, no sign in to Netlify, no nothing, uh, no credentials needed between the two. It's just very simple, very fast. And personally, until I see the other tools kind of progress better, um, I think I'll be sticking with Bolt.new, especially in my role as like a product person to whip up prototypes and, and things like that to get feedback on. I think I'm definitely leaning with 
bolt.new but let's talk about some of the other alternatives because you know that's the whole point of all these tools right is these are all very early so let's just see how these other tools compare and you know what we can keep track of going forward as these things improve the next one is lovable.dev very similar to bolt.new in that you can just go to lovable.dev in a new browser tab same thing chat window and you can just start typing in and giving it a prompt just like bolt.new the issue with lovable.dev for me personally was that I was getting errors as long as I wasn't logged in. So it looks like when you first get to lovable.dev, you can just start typing your prompt and it'll start building like bolt. But um, I was getting errors until I logged in, which is just another extra step that I didn't like about it. And from there, it behaves very similar to bolts, um, you know, almost exactly the same. Uh, but there are some things about it that, you know, I wasn't as um impressed with so for example like the ui i thought it did you know slightly good with animations a little bit but it was a very underwhelming ui i didn't spend a lot of time trying to actually you know get it to work super well um in terms of like redesigning everything i really wanted to get a feel for what these things could do out of the box with the least amount of prompting and that's why i said i, th I think bolt was the best at understanding the project from the very beginning but I'm sure lovable.dev could have done some incredible work if I continued to like implement it and prompt back and forth with it. But otherwise, um, it, it also uh, did a pretty good job of understanding the assignment, getting the, the app to work and it was responsive. And, you know, like I said, styling could have been better in my opinion, but otherwise it, it worked pretty decent. Um, and then also, I think one thing about lovable.dev is that they have a integration with Superbase. So I believe you can just push a button and you can connect a Superbase uh, account to it or connect to an actual database. I didn't try this myself, but um, the button is right there in the UI in the upper right corner. So uh, nice to know that that's something that they, they just natively support right inside your browser is connecting the app to a database. That's a question I, I was getting asked a lot as I've been you know chatting with people about this and showing people stuff. It's like, oh, can this thing do back end development? And Bolt definitely can. Um, but again, I don't know that it's as easy to do as having a button where you just push it and connect to Superbase. Um, and then beyond that, they both have uh, ways to kind of do version control. So in Bolt.new, I think you have to push it directly to Stack Blitz because again, this tool is meant to promote their their repos where they actually do version control stuff. But for lovable.dev, they actually have a button as well. They will just let you uh, immediately connect to GitHub and uh, push your code to a repo. So I think that's really convenient too, uh, to be able to take it directly from lovable.dev and just uh, push it to a GitHub repo is really nice. And then you also have a publish button where I think lovable uses Verso, but I didn't deploy the app to, to find out. I was kind of just doing a little speed run to kind of play around with these things and just get a feel for, you know, how they compare to each other. So finally, I wanted to try some of the other IDEs that were more um, like local to your machine. So I heard about Cursor, I heard about Windsurf as an alternative. I will tell you that now I'm very much using Cursor and I'll make another video about that um, another time. But, but I tried Windsurf because it was a free alternative to Cursor and I just wanted to see, you know, what one of these things could do. And so Cursor was getting a lot of love, a lot of hype, but I was seeing Windsurf as this alternative. So I was like, okay, let me try this out. Let me see what's what's possible. So uh, Windsurf is a VS Code fork. It looks and feels just like VS Code. If you know, if you use VS Code, you're familiar with that. And you know, it does a lot of the same things that you know Bolt and Lovable do, but it's all in an actual native like IDE on your machine. So what's what's good about that is you can actually have the code already on your machine and bolts runs i think lovable as well too all these things are running your application in some type of like virtual machine in the browser right and for your things like cursor or windsurf the cool thing is that it's using the local tools on your machine whatever versions of like node react python ruby whatever you have it's building with the tools that are on your machine and that file and all the files are already local on your machine from the beginning so as soon as you start building the app and running it locally and everything you know for a fact that this app works it's a it's a real app. you don't have to worry about like a mismatch let's say from an environment you know difference in stack blitz and then you download that file or that folder and try to open it on your machine and run that app and then you've got like dependency issues or something like that so something like cursor or windsurf allows you to actually build locally which i think is is really great the thing i didn't like about windsurf to be honest was number one it, it takes a lot of like manual back and forth so it doesn't like 
suggest the, all the code changes for you right away it really wants you to be involved with like approving the code changes and accepting them as it goes through which i don't think is bad because you want that kind of flow of control but i like the way the cursor implements that better which again i'll talk about in another video but i just i just don't like the ui that windsurf had for that i think it just kind of makes the whole thing feel a little bit more tedious i think lovable and bolt both got ui down much better like not even close than windsurf did um out of the box now again i didn't give it any mock-up inspiration i didn't um try to like prompt it back and forth too much to improve on that but i think just out of the box there's a lot to be said for just from a design piece i think you it would take you a lot more prompts a lot more work on something like windsurf to get what you could get out of the box with bold.new and lovable and i'll talk more about my new workflow and development now because i honestly feel like it's probably changed forever with these new tools and and how it continues to change and evolve will you know will grow over time and i'll, I'll try to keep y'all up to date let me know down in the comments if this was helpful for y'all and also like are you using these tools there's a bunch of other ones i haven't mentioned in here so let me know if you're using stuff like replit agent which i haven't tried there was just way too much logging in and clicking to do to get to replit agent but i've heard good things about that one let me know if y'all check that out check out the description down below in the description box it's got everything from my startup wait list we're doing a, a pitch and partner event on january January 11th if you're a startup founder or you want to join a startup and you want to work on some other ideas we're doing an event bright check the link for that down below we've got my personal newsletter down there so just check out everything in the description um you know and let me know if y'all found this helpful what else do y'all want to know about what else do you want to hear about what else do you want to see and make sure y'all subscribe if you haven't already my name is darian i'll see you in the next video all right